Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the sciences, the Fermi Paradox. As I discussed in a previous podcast on the sciences, the Drake Equation, I had a discussion with my friend, and it was very fun, uh, heated, fun discussion. And we were talking about aliens and some of the new declassified stuff. And it got me thinking, I had a lot of these articles that I had bookmarked, and I would gather... You know, four or five that have to do with aliens and if they're out there. So the Drake Equation, I explained. You can listen to that one. As always, I'll put the link to the article in the description. And mostly, I read word for word, injecting a little bit here and there. And then I'll sum it up at the end. There's um a little bit of history here with the other connections. So I might be doing a little bit of stuff on the big bang might come up but that might come up with a great filter uh this article is from space.com by elizabeth howell fermi paradox where are the aliens this article has a lot of links highlighted color if you're looking at the uh actual site it gives you tons of information on some of the things they'll talk about in the article all right so i'll begin the Fermi Paradox seeks to answer the question of where the aliens are. Given that our star and Earth are part of a young planetary system compared to the rest of the universe, and that interstellar travel might be fairly, fairly easy to achieve, the theory says that Earth should have been visited by aliens already. As the story goes, Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, most famous for creating the first nuclear reactor, came up with the theory with a casual, with a causal lunchtime remark, a casual <laughs> lunchtime remark in the 1950s. The implications, however, have had extraterrestrial researchers scratching their heads in the decades since. Fermi realized that any civilization with a modest amount of rocket technology and an immodest amount of imperial incentive could rapidly colonize the entire galaxy. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, Institute in Mount View, California, said on its website, Within 10 million years, every star system could be brought under the wing of an empire. 10 million years may sound long, but in fact, it's quite short compared to the age of the galaxy, which is roughly 10,000 million years. Colonization of the Milky Way should be a quick exercise. Fermi reported, reportedly made the initial remark, but he died in 1954. Publication fell to other people, such as Ma Michael Hart, who wrote an article titled An Explanation for the Absence of Extraterrestrials on Earth. And by the way, there is a highlight in blue. You can read the article. In the Royal Astronomical, Astron Astronomical Society, quarterly 1975. Some say that this is the first such paper to explore the Fermi Paradox. Although this claim is a bit hard to prove. We observe that no intelligent beings from outer space are now present on Earth, Hart wrote in the abstract. It is suggested that this fact can best be explained by the hypothesis that there are no other advanced civilizations in our galaxy. He noted, however, that the more research in biochemistry, planetary formation, and atmospheres was needed to better, better narrow down the answer. While Hart was one of the opinions that we were the only advanced civilization in the galaxy, he argued that in Earth's history, somebody could have visited us already unless they started on their journey less than 2 million years ago. He outlined four arguments exploring the paradox. 1. Aliens never came because of a physical difficulty that makes space travel infeasible, which could be related to astronomy, biology, or engineering. 2. Aliens chose never to come to Earth. 3. Advanced civilization arose too recently for aliens to reach us. 4. Aliens have visited Earth in the past, but we have not observed them. The argument has been challenged on many grounds. Maybe star travel is not feasible, or maybe nobody chooses to colonize the galaxy. Or maybe we were visited long ago when the evidence is buried with the dinosaurs. 
But the idea has become entrenched in thinking about alien civilizations, wrote Fermi Paradox researcher Robert H. Gray in a 2016 Scientific American blog post, which is also highlighted in blue. You can find the link. Frank Tipler, a professor of physics at Tulane University, followed up on the argument in 1980 with a paper titled Extraterrestrial Intelligent Beings Do Not Exist. Also published in the RAS Quarterly Journal, the bulk of this paper dealt with how to get resources for interstellar travel, which he suggested could be achieved by having some kind of self-replicating artificial intelligence moving from star system to star system and create copies using materials there. Since these beings aren't on Earth, Tipler argued we are likely the only intelligence out there. He also said that those who believe in extraterrestrial intelligence are similar to those who think about UFOs, because both camps believe we are going to be saved from ourselves by some miraculous interstellar intervention. Today, the topic of extraterrestrial intelligence is a popular one, with several papers appearing every year from different researchers. It has also been fueled by the discovery, the discovery of exoplanets. And there's a link, I think, to a video. The site's very good, I like it. Space.com. The universe is incredibly vast and old. One estimate says the universe spans 92 billion light years in diameter, while growing faster and faster. Separate measurements indicate is it about 13.82 billion years old. At first blush, this would give an alien civilization plenty of time to propagate, but then they would have a cosmic distance barrier to cross before getting too far into space. Fermi first formed his theory long before scientists found planets outside of our solar system. There are now more than 3,000 confirmed planets, with more being found frequently. The sheer number of planets that we have found outside our solar system indicates that life could be plentiful. Over time, with more advanced telescopes, scientists will be able to probe the chemical compositions of their atmospheres. The eventual goal is is to understand how often rocky planets form in the habitable regions of their stars, which is traditionally defined as the zone in which water can exist on the surface. Habitability, however, isn't just about water. Other factors must be considered, such as how active the star is and what is the composition of the planet's atmosphere. On November 2013, study using data from the Kepler telescope suggested that one in five sun-like stars has an Earth-sized planet orbiting in the habitable region of its star. That zone is not necessarily an indication of life, as other factors such as the planet's atmosphere come into play. Further life could encompass anything from bacteria to starship sailing extraterrestrials. A few months later, Kepler scientists released a planet bonanza of 715 newly discovered worlds, pioneering a new technique called veri verification by multiplicity. The theory essentially postulates that a star that appears to have multiple objects crossing its face or tugging at it would have planets as opposed to stars. Multiple star systems such as close proximity would de destabilize over time. The technique postulates. Using this will accelerate the pace of exoplanet discovery, NASA said in 2014. Researchers previously focused on red dwarf stars as possible hosts of habitable planets, but as the years of study continued, limitations arose. It was exciting to find nearby planets such as Proxima Centauri b and the seven rocky planets of Trappist 1 in the regions of their stars where liquid water could exist on the planet's surface. The trouble is, Red dwarfs are volatile and could send several forms of life-killing radiation towards the surface. More study is required to better understand these stars. And if I'm correct, in my Drake equation, I think I talked about the Proxima Centauri B and Trappist 1. I'll continue. More extra exoplanet hunting spacecraft are coming online in the next few years. The Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, launched successfully in April 2018 to study nearby stars. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope 
expected to launch in 2020, will examine planets for the chemical makeup of their atmospheres. The European Space Agency, PLATO, Planetary Transits and Oscillations of Stars, is expected to launch in 2026, and larger ground-based observatories are being envisioned, such as the European Extremely Large Telescope that should see first light around 2024. Our understanding of astrobiology, life in the universe, is just at a beginning, however. One challenge is these exoplanets are so far away that it is next to impossible for us to send a probe out to look at them. Another obstacle is even without, within our own solar system, we haven't eliminated all the possible locations for life. We know from looking at Earth that microbes can survive in extreme temperatures and environments, giving rise to theories that we could find microbe life, microbe-like life on Mars, the icy Jovian moon Europa, or perhaps Saturn's Enceladus <laughs> or Titan. All of this together means that even within our own Milky Way galaxy, the equivalent of a cosmic neighborhood, there should be many Earth-sized planets and habitable zones that could host life. But what are the odds these worlds having star fairies in their bounds? And there's another link to another article. Life, plentiful or rare? The odds of intelligent life are estimated in the Drake Equation which seeks to figure out the number of civilizations in a Milky Way that seek to communicate with each other. In the words of SETI, the equation are written as. I did this before, the Drake equation, I did the whole podcast was N equals R, S, R, F, P, N, E, F, L, F, I, F, C, L. And has the variables. N is the number of civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy whose electric magnetic emissions are detectable. R, star, <laughs> Is equals the rate of formation of stars suitable for the development of intelligent life. FP, the fraction of those stars with planetary systems. And E, the number of planets per solar system with an environment suitable for life. FL, the fraction of suitable planets on which life actually appears. FI, the fraction of life bearing planets on which intelligent life emerges. FC, the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signs of their existence into space. L, equals the length of time such, a, such civilizations release detectable signs into space. All right, so I went over that. The, I did the whole podcast on the Drake equation. I'll continue now. None of these values are known with any certainty right now, which makes predictions difficult for astrobiologists and extraterrestrial communicators alike. There is another possibility that would dampen the search for radio signals or alien spacecraft. However, that there is no life in the universe besides our own. While SETI's Frank Drake and others suggested there could be 10,000 10, civilizations seeking communications in the galaxy, a 2011 study later published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences suggested that Earth could be a rare bird among planets. It took at least 3.5 billion years for intelligent life to evolve. The theory by Princeton University researchers David Spiegel and Edwin Turner said, which indicates it takes a lot of time and luck for this to happen. Other explanations for the Fermi paradox include extraterrestrial spying on Earth, ignoring, ignoring it altogether, visiting it before civilization arose, or visiting it in a way that we can't detect. Recent Fermi Paradox Discussion While the Fermi Paradox question has baffled scientists for decades, there are some new insights that could help researchers better understand why aliens have been so hard to find. In 2015, a study looked at the likelihood of a world evolving with a habitable environment using data from the Hubble Telescope and a couple of Kepler Space Telescope. It suggests Earth was an early bloomer. Even though the study excluded intelligent life, the study suggests that our planet's birth came very early in the universe's history. When Earth was formed about 4.6 billion years ago, the study said only 8% of the potentially habitable planets that will be ever be formed that will ever form in the universe existed. In other words, 
Most of the material available to form habitable planets is still around, giving lots of time for alien civilizations to form. Or perhaps, life may be too fragile to survive for long. A 2016 study suggests that the early part of a rocky planet's history can be very conductive to life, as life would emerge after about 500 million years after the planet cools down and water is available. However, after that point, the planet's climate could easily wipe life out. Look at Venus, which has a runaway greenhouse effect, or Mars, which lost most of its atmosphere to space. The study was led by Adida Chopra, who was then with the Australian National University in L- in ANU in Canberra. In 2017, Space.com republished a real clear science article with 12 reasons why we cannot find aliens, ranging from intelligent life itself, intelligent life self-destructing to nobody being willing to transmit their whereabouts. So, that's the end of the article. There's tons of blue highlighted words that lead to other articles that they talk about, which I find fascinating, and these will be the other topics I do. There's some other great barrier, or the great filter, and I will circle back around. But this is just uh, interesting in how it was formed by some Italian physicist, and he never really got to even um, flesh out his ideas. But it's just a great, you know, thing I think about. And going back to the discussion we had, in my thinking, it's more likely UFOs are us as humans in some various form. You know, depending on what, so, you know, what state or country is developing new technology or phenomenon we don't understand yet. More than likely it was aliens. Now, that doesn't mean I rule it out totally. And this was part of the conversation we had. And it was, like I said, fun conversation. But just think about the stars. You look out. I had another conversation with a different friend about even if you were to travel at light speed. Light speed. It would take like three, four years to get out of our uh, galaxy or something. So even that's like, that's just our solar system or whatever. It's just space is big and vast. So I'm, I totally can see other civilizations less advanced and more advanced than us out there. And there's no, the distances are just way too um, big for us. And the circumstances aren't, uh, as some of the things in this article talked about, maybe they don't want to get in contact. There was one theory, there's Dark Forest Theory, or was like Michu Kaku was like, you know, if you don't want to contact aliens for whatever one reason or another, and that would be probably another podcast. But there's just a lot of interesting things that happen in, in the world, and we look at uh, what could it be, and our minds go to jump in different places. And I tend to look at these things and say, okay, I think there is life in the universe out there. And it, there's a good chance it's like us, maybe less advanced and more advanced in certain circumstances. But what would be the incredible thing is if there was a civilization millions of years older than us. And would they send these replication probes throughout the universe and gather materials and or even archive solar systems and because when you think on the long game in that sense i did this on the five eras of the universe it's another podcast i did there are stages to the universe that we kind of almost positive happen in, in a certain way and we don't know the total end result like if it's going to be a crunch where the universe comes back and bounces back into a, a tiny spot or it just further just the uh, heat death of the universe type thing. I just find it all fascinating. We have stages of the universe to think about and the civilizations that will get there will have to be using the power of their sun or power of get black holes. And that was another conversation we had. Um, yeah, I got to do a, uh, a podcast on Dyson Sphere. <laughs> uh, that's another conversation fucking Dyson Spheres uh, this is all great I love science craziness it's just um, 
a kick I get out of it. I hope people enjoy it in some sense. Especially with all my fuck-ups on the mic. There's a lot to, you know, let your mind wander and think of what could be. And I would just like Bigfoot, I would love for Bigfoot to be real. Uh, but I don't believe aliens are visiting us, dodging our planes, hiding from our surveillance or, or our cameras and our, you know, this is too many other things that kind of, I don't rule it out. I just don't think it's more probable than just us not understanding something or a fucking gimbal's upside down and there's a piece of dust on it and there are, you know, before the boom of uh, every person and their uncle could have a drone now, you know, what was that going on? Oh, they could move, you know, so it's just the way I think and where my mind goes. But the conversation, the conversation has spurred um, really fun, uh, you know, debate in a sense. And I enjoy it very much. So this is a Fermi paradox. And I guess you would call the playlist of the sciences. I hope you all enjoy it. Be well, be healthy. My best to everybody. Take care.